Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be taking a look at this Askar 6 nanometer dual narrowband 2 inch mounted filter. This was kindly sent to me by Sharpstar Optics as part of a review program. So to be completely transparent, I do have to send this filter back after the review, it's not mine to keep. Also, Sharpstar haven't given me any indication on what they want me to say, what they don't want me to say. So let's hope the, the results of the images do the talking for them. This is the telescope I'm going to use tonight to do the filter tests. It's my Alta Astro 130 EDT triplet refractor, which is 910 millimeters at f7. Attached to it, I've got my ZWO 2600 one-shot cooled color camera and the ZWO filter drawer, which is where I'm going to place the six nanometer filter. So hopefully the weather stays as predicted, which is for a fairly clear night. Now I'm going to split the test up into two different sets of tests. The first set is going to be slowing the scope to some very well-known bright stars and taking some fairly long single exposures. So for the second part of the test, I'm going to slew the scope to some emission nebulae, which is obviously what this filter is designed to do, to capture those HA and O3 light photons arriving at your camera sensor. Now I'm going to split this test into two as well. I'm going to take some single 10 minute exposures of some fairly well-known emission nebulae and then what I'm going to do at the end, if time permitting, is do a fully integrated image of NGC 7000, the Great American Nebula. So it wouldn't be a clear night without any challenges, would it? Later on, we're predicting 25 mile per hour gusts of wind. Now that won't affect the filter's performance at all. That's down to my mounts guiding and tracking accuracy. However, there is a 94% illuminated moon. Now that definitely will have some bearing on the filter's performance. And it's going to be a great test to see what the results are with a nearly full moon shining into the night sky whilst we take these images. So let's have a closer look at the images I took with the filter using PixInsight. All I've done to these images is to debare them and to give them a temporary stretch. So let's have a look at the single star images. We have Shadar and Murfak. This is a single 60 second exposure of Shadar. If we zoom into the center of the star, it's a magnitude 2.2, so quite bright. And I think the filter's done a really nice job. Certainly no apparent halo around that. If we go to Murfak though, something strange. So this was taken literally two minutes later and there is an apparent halo. It's a very very faint halo and it's 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 unusually large. Normally halos are, certainly for a 60 second exposure would be around this area. I actually think this could have been caused by stray light not the filter itself. So if anybody's got any thoughts about what might be happening with the image of Murfak, please leave a comment below. But let's move on to the nebulae. So each of these was taken in the same night. They're all 600 seconds long, which is 10 minutes. Let's open up the first one, which is the Eastern Veil. I was like, wow, there's so much data here for a single 10 minute exposure. And do bear in mind, the moon was 94% illuminated that night. So some great detail being brought through and again, there's no apparent halo going on on any of the brighter stars. Really pleased with that as a single image. Let's have a look at the Western Veil. So as we know, the Western Veil, the Witcher's Broom, has this very bright star in the middle of it. And again, if I zoom into this, there is no halo present on that image. And we've got some lovely detail coming through for a single image. Let's close that down and have a look at the next one, which is Malot 15. I chose this image because there's some brightish stars in the middle of this cluster. Um, and again, some nice detail coming through in the structures of the nebulae. And there's certainly, again, 
no apparent halo on any of the stars. So again, a nice result. We move on to the Pelican Nebula. So, I did immediately start to home in on the two very bright stars. This guy, and there was another one down in the bottom left. And to me, they look like to be, is this a halo? So, I remembered I'd taken a picture of the Pelican with the same camera and the same exposure, different scope, a year ago. And so I, I thought I'll dig that out. And this is that same image. And we can see, oh, wow, okay, this is with the Optolong L Extreme filter. And there's a massive halo on the same star. Now, I'm not bashing Optolong here. And I did hear that some batches of Optolong L Extreme filters did actually have a halo issue. So it may well be that I unfortunately had one of those bad batches of filters. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I heard. Okay, let's close these down because we're concentrating on the ASCAR filter. So again, some lovely structure being picked out in the Pelican and also some nice dark wispy dark nebulae over here. So again, a fantastic result for a single 10 minute exposure. We'll have a look at the Crescent Nebula next. It's like, wow. We're even starting to see some of the gas that surrounds what I call the brain in the middle. To me, this looks like a brain. But again, what a lovely image. Some of the nebulae coming through, the HA coming through in the background. Another great result. Super impressed. And then we finish off with the Cygnus wall. It's like, wow. Wow. I just, I, well, it's one of my favorite targets in the night sky. I've imaged it a lot of times. Um, I love this, what I call the scorpion's tail here. I don't know why no one else calls it that, but it, to me, it looks like a scorpion's tail. Some great structures coming out. Again, no haloing going on on any of the stars. Um, a fantastic result. So, after I took this final image of the Cygnus wall, I decided this was the target that I was going to take multiple images of and stack into a final image. That's coming up very soon. So I hope you agree from the results that I've got so far, other than that oddity with Murfak, the filter has performed incredibly well. It's been a joy to use and the details and some of the data that's come out in this, I've been super impressed with. So let's have a look at that stacked image.